Hello everyone, it's Karen here from tuppenscolour.co.uk Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, this is what I'm going to be making. It's a twist fold card. Uh, much, much easier to make than you would think. And if you would like to see how I made it, stay with me and I will show you. This is Sahara Sand card. I've just taken my piece of A4 and I've just chopped it in half uh, along the length of it and then I've trimmed it to 11 inches and this is going to be the base of my cardstock. Before I fold it I want to show you what I've done to my Simply Scored. I've taken a sharpie marker and I've just run it along the channel at the 6 inch mark so I've got the halfway point on my scoreboard. I've also with a thinner marker done the 3 inch and the 9 inch mark but I'm not going to be worrying about them today. It's just the 6 inch mark that I need. So here's my piece of Sahara sand. Uh, and I'm just going to place it with one corner in the six inch channel and I'm holding on to that end and I'm swiveling it round so that the other corner is in the marked channel. Can you see that? So that corner's on the marked channel, that corner's on the marked channel and I'm just going to score it. And then bring my bone folder and burnish it and that's the basis of my card. The next thing I want to do is I want to fold that card in half and the easiest way that I've found it is to take the corner that I've folded and to match it up along the fold line at the opposite corner and then to burnish along, sorry about the noise, to burnish along that score line. Open it out I refold it and put that mark that you just made on your middle score line and come back in with the scoring tool and just reinforce that fold. You're going through several layers of card so you want to make sure that it works properly and then there is the basis of your twisted fold card. So here is my card blank, uh, which is a very interesting shape, and now I want to put some DSP on it. I want to cover it, uh, but it is a tricky little monkey to cover because you can't just, you know, cut a piece of paper and cut it square and, and all the rest of it. It's not quite as simple as that. Now, the way that Kelly tells you to do it, she tells you to cut uh, another rectangle of paper that is just a little bit smaller than the one the card you started with and to do the same thing to score from corner to corner fold it over fold it in half uh, and then to cut along these lines uh, well that's fine if you're going to be using um, a piece of paper that's big enough and is double-sided and is, it, that you want the same on the inside and the outside because if you want something different uh, on the inside to the outside of your card you are going to need two pieces of paper uh, because the way it cuts, well, the way it cuts, you wind up with, you know, two that are identical. And I didn't want that because, for one thing, I wanted to use these papers, which are from our Going Places DSP. And as you can see, they are six by six. They are not big enough for me to, to chop in half and fold over and do all the rest of it. So I had to come up with a new way of doing it. And I came up with the idea of cutting myself a template. So I started with a piece of paper that was, and I wrote it on the back, 10 and, uh, 10 and a half by three and three quarters. Just a piece of scrap paper. This happens to be some of our grid paper. And I did the same thing. I measured from corner to corner and I sliced it down the middle. And then I was left with that shape, uh, which now makes me a template. And I marked the top Sorry, that's the top. Look like that. <laughs> See, I told you it was an awkward shape to cover. Uh, so that, I marked the top and the bottom. And the top and the bottom, you can tell them because that is where the right angles are. And that is going to be important because you can very easily lose track of what you're doing <laughs> when, you're, uh, when you're cutting this paper out. Uh, so I use those to create myself a couple of card templates. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to take my DSP and I'm going to trace around it and uh, I will 
fast forward this bit and I will be back soon. So I've traced around my bits of card onto my DSP, can you see that? And now I'm going to cut along the lines uh, with my stamping trimmer. So I'm going to line up the traced line in my trimmer. If I can find the wretched thing, there it is. I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to cut up along the line. I put that away, I don't need that. And here's my other line. I bring that in. That fits neatly inside of there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the rest of them. And here are my pieces of DSP ready to go on to my card. So I've got my snail. And I've decided that I want this piece and this piece on the front. Now I could, if I wanted to, just put that one piece over the front of the card and just leave it like that. I could do that, but I'm not going to. bigger space there but you know what it doesn't matter because that's going to be covered up nobody will see it all right so I want this piece I think also to go on the front Oops. now if I had decided that I wanted this pattern on the front of my card um, because it's because it's a dark pattern it would be difficult to see if I was putting pencil lines on it so what I would do in those circumstances I would flip the template over and draw on this side but you have to remember to flip the template over because otherwise it will not work you will get the side that you didn't want so that's going to be the front of my card now on the inside same thing again Again, this is another, if I'd wanted the darker side, I would have flipped over, oops, and I've run out of snail. Excuse me for a minute while I get another, while I get a refill. Uh, it's a good opportunity, really, to show you how easy it is to, to change a snail refill. So I've taken it out of its, its wrapping, and I'm going to take that piece of packing out of the front there, and then that it's my old cartridge, don't want that. And this just pops in there. Just like that. And we're good to go. So next time I'm putting in an order to stamping up, I will make sure to reorder another refill for my snail. Because I don't want to be without it. My last piece. Snail works better if you take the little, little cover off, which is very useful and it stops the dirt and the dust and the rubbish getting inside the cassette, but sometimes it's a pain when you forget to move it out of the way. Now, it was very important when I cut this that I cut it up the right way up because there's, there's writing on there. Okay, and if I hadn't that had been upside down, it would have looked very silly. 
So we're nearly done. I've been doing some stamping using our Going Global stamp set and I used the globe and the compass and I use soft suede ink on very vanilla and I punched them out with the two inch circle punch and I also stamped You Mean the World to Me and I'm Lost Without You. Uh, again, soft suede on very vanilla and I cut those with the washi label punch. So those are now ready to go onto the front of my card. Uh, I've got some of our Lost Lagoon striped cotton ribbon and I just want a little, little piece of this. That'll be plenty, I think. Make sure I've got my right scissors. So I've got keep one set of scissors just for cutting ribbon and I put a different charm on the end of them. Uh, just so that I could tell the difference because cutting paper, as you know, blunts scissors. So I'm just going to snip across the ends of those, put those out of the way. And that now is ready to go onto the front of my card. So I think the glue dot for this. And first of all, I'm going to put a mini glue dot in between the two pieces of ribbon. Well, the one piece of ribbon, but the two layers of ribbon. So that they stick together. And then we have another glue dot onto the back of that. And I'm going to use dimensionals on the back of my globe. Oops, that was lost its backing, so we'll use that one next. I want to make sure I put that the right way up, even though they did leave the British Isles off by accident. <laughs> but we're not bitter. I'm not bitter at all. No, I'm not proud. Um, do I want to stick that down a bit? I think that could probably do with a glue dot to sort of hold it in place. Just stop it popping up. If I'd thought about it, I could have run a little bit of snail or a bit of fast fuse along there just to stop it popping up. And keep sticking to my table. I don't want that to happen. Okay. So here's my You Mean the World to Me. And that can go on the front as well. Okay. And where should we put that? Just like that. Okay. Oops. Leaving bits of my card on my table. Did not want to do that. I did not want to do that. Okay, so there's the, the front of my card with my You Mean the World to Me at a jaunty angle. So on the inside, uh, we're going to use snail for this because we don't want things sticking up. So just a little bit of light snail. I've run a little bit of uh, tear and tape down the inside of, of the card there so that that is now a little pocket. So I could put, um, I could put a little secret message in it, I could put a little gift card in it, um, or I could just leave it as it is. It's entirely up to me. So here's the finished card and I did go back in and uh, readjust the position of that sentiment because it was doing me head in with being, uh, <laughs> with being at a jaunty angle. Uh, I hope you'll agree that this card looks like it took you hours and hours and hours to make and when you know how it is so simple. So thank you Kelly Gettlefinger for coming up with, with this design because it is absolutely genius. So I do hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if so, I would very much like it if you would leave me a comment or if you would click the like button. Uh, 
If you would like to see more of my tutorials, then please do subscribe to this channel. There will be more soon. I try to get up at least two a week. And I have a blog and I have a Facebook page. And if you want to see what's going on there, then you can certainly get there from the links in the more information box below. Uh, if you want to find out uh, where I got the materials that I used, then you can go to my Stamping Up shop. There's a link from my, uh, from my blog there as well. Uh, but just for now, thank you very much for watching and I hope I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.